I died last night. It wasn't the first time. It won't be the last. I can't remember my first death. There's been hundreds of thousands of them, maybe more. All I know is that each day I wake up in the body of someone who is meant to die that day in one way or another. It could be an accident of some kind, a disease, an execution, but no matter how it's going to end, I know I'm living the worst day of some stranger's life. At least, that's been the case up until now. You see, something happened today that I can't explain, and I'm sitting here writing this as I prepare to go to bed for the first night in hundreds of years. This morning started, more or less, like any other. I opened my eyes as the morning light came through the window, wondering if I was going to be enjoying myself for a bit, or if I was in another immobile body just waiting on my heart to stop beating. I never know exactly where I'll wind up. On several occasions, I've found myself lying in a hospital bed of some sort. Sometimes there's family standing over me, others I'm alone and on life support. One of the most agonizing times was when I woke up in the body of a soldier who had been gravely wounded in the Battle of Gettysburg. The pain was overwhelming. I'd lost both my legs, an infection had set in, and I was just hoping the end would come quick. I honestly don't know how many hours passed with me lying on that stretcher, but it felt like weeks before my body finally gave in. At least that kid's family had a body to bury, though. One of the worst was when I woke up on a cold morning at a solo campsite in some mountain range in the middle of a blizzard. My body was already half frozen, and there was nothing I could do but wait for the end. When a hungry wolf showed up and started gnawing on my leg, I found out what true pain really was. It's not all doom and gloom, though. One morning, I woke to find myself on a cruise in the Caribbean Ocean. My new bride was laying next to me, and the room looked as though we had enjoyed ourselves quite a bit the night before. I got to have a few drinks and really live it up on that one, at least until a very belligerent drunk pushed me overboard and I got pulled into the propeller. My absolute favorite of all time, though, was when I woke up as a retired banker who had managed to raise a family that actually cared about him. His, my, wife, was still beautiful even as her gray hair fell around her face. That particular day was spent taking the grandkids to the zoo and then out for ice cream before going home and suffering a massive heart attack as I pulled in the driveway. That was one day I wished I could live over and over. As I sat up in bed, I found myself in a rather luxurious room with large windows that looked out over a rocky shore being battered by waves. I knew I had to be on the east coast of some country, with the sun making its way higher into the sky over the ocean. I could never really be sure what country I might wind up in, or what race or gender I was going to be for that matter. Today I happened to be in the body of a guy with an amazing tan. I wasn't sure if it was just from being in the sun until I looked in the mirror and saw a European face staring back at me with clear Mediterranean heritage. If I had to die today, at least I was going to do it as a rather attractive guy. I don't really know what my original race or gender was. I've honestly lost track over the years of who I've been. I've gotten pretty good at figuring out who the person I've jumped into is and adjusting. I don't want to ruin the last day of their lives or the memory of who they were by changing too much. That actually became a really big deal to me a few years ago when I found myself in the body of a young woman in college who was dating a guy whose brother had passed away the prior year. After a little bit of conversation, I was able to figure out that I had been the one in the brother's body when he fell into the river and drowned. It was kind of surreal to be honest, and it isn't something that happens often. As I finished getting dressed, I heard the bedroom door slide open and the voice of an older woman announcing breakfast had arrived. I walked out of the bathroom and greeted her with a smile, which seemed to surprise her. Mr. Dracos, you seem rather in a good mood this morning, if I may say so. I'm happy to see that the loss of your ship isn't getting to you, she said, 
half grinning back at me. There's no reason to let a little thing like the loss of a ship get to me, is there? I said, doing my best to pretend I wasn't completely confused. I suppose not, especially when you have the money to just buy a new one. If that's all, sir, I'll be heading back to the kitchen. She turned and walked back out the door. Before I go any further, I should probably explain that I have no idea what language either of us was speaking. For as long as I can remember, I can just understand the people in the life of the person I drop into, and they can understand me. It's not universal, so I can't understand languages that the person didn't know. But it helps that I don't have to spend any time learning new languages for the blink of an eye that I exist in that life. As I ate breakfast, I took some time to browse my phone for any kind of news on who this guy is. I knew I only had a few hours, but it's always interesting to get to know the person I'm in. It only took a few minutes to find out my name is Roger Dracos, and I apparently run one of the biggest fashion companies in the world. My name was in the news as my yacht sank the day before off the coast of Italy with several people on board for a fashion show. I was supposed to be joining them via helicopter yesterday evening, but an explosion caused the boat to go down before I arrived. Some news outlets said it was an assassination attempt, and others claimed it was insurance fraud. It could have been either for all I know. I don't get the thoughts of the person when I take over, so half the fun is piecing their life together and playing a role. After reading more about myself, I concluded it was most likely an attempt on my life. The guy was a complete asshole. He treated everyone like crap, and every single article I found about him made it seem like nobody liked him very much. I wanted to at least make up for some of it before I kicked the bucket. Making my way out of the room and wandering through the house, I found an office that I assumed must be where I did most of my work. Rifling through filing cabinets and reading everything I could find, I discovered the name and number of Mr. Dracos' accountant. Picking up the phone, I decided to see how much money I had and how I could best get rid of it. The conversation didn't go quite as planned, with the accountant telling me that although I had a few billion dollars, most of it was unavailable on short notice. I would need to submit a lot of paperwork and wait a few weeks if I wanted to free up anything for charity. When he started to question my mental state, I ended the call, telling him I would get back with him. Trying to change my will was just as fruitless. I started to wonder if being this rich was really all it was cracked up to be if I couldn't just do what I wanted with my money. My will apparently leaves everything to my company, with a small amount set aside to build a statue dedicated to me in the atrium of the design studio. I suppose building one while I was alive would be too egotistical. As I contemplated what to do, I heard a knock at the office door. Mr. Dracos, are you planning to go into the office today? Manuel is asking when you want him to bring the car around. Oh, yeah, I suppose I should do that. Tell him I'll be ready in 15 minutes, I said, as I pretended to be filing something away. Within minutes, I found myself climbing into the back of a town car, with my driver opening and closing the door and treating me like some kind of royalty. I've been in the body of a few wealthy people, and it always makes me feel rather nasty. The way everyone around them is always doing everything for them, waiting on them hand and foot. This is probably one of the worst and the wealthiest I've ever seen. I would have just brushed it off since I only had at most a few hours left, but I couldn't help myself. I'm sorry for the way I've treated you, I said to the driver as we pulled out of the driveway. He nearly wrecked the car at the sound of my voice. It took a couple of minutes for him to regain his composure and reply. It's quite all right, sir. I live to serve after all. No, it's not all right. You deserve better. I want to make it up to you somehow. In the meantime, could you slow down a bit? I'm not really a fan of high speeds, I said, thinking back to an accident I had been in that caused one of my deaths. I wasn't wanting this life to end like that, lying in a ditch and waiting for my death. As you wish, sir. He slowed the car down, just managing to follow the speed limit. I thought this would be the perfect chance to ask him about his life, 
when a loud crash interrupted me. The car was flipping, finally coming to a rest after what felt like an eternity. I was conscious just long enough to see the front of the car seem to be gone and to promise myself I was never going to ride in a car again. Then everything went black. I woke up in the back of an ambulance, being moved out and through the doors of a hospital. Nothing made sense. I thought maybe I had jumped into another body, but when I heard one of the nurses say my name, I realized I was still Mr. Dracos. My injuries weren't life-threatening, but my driver had been killed in what appeared to be another attempt on my life. The past few hours have been a blur of activity, but I was finally able to get my assistant, a lovely woman named Jan, to stop fussing over me long enough to grab my laptop so I could write all of this down. I'm spending the night here in the hospital, which feels like the strangest thing I've ever said. From what I was able to figure out, speaking to the police, there was a bomb planted on the side of the road that my car took every day to work. Whoever detonated it set it on a timer when my car left the house with the time based on the exact time it took my car to travel from my house to that spot. They must have watched the route for months to make sure the timing was accurate, but for some reason it exploded as the front of the car passed rather than the back. I think that asking the driver to slow down threw off the timing and saved my life. I have no idea what happens now. Will I die in my sleep? Do I just live as Mr. Dracos until I eventually die of another cause? I'm terrified and rather excited at the same time. This writing will be my way of tracking things and maybe I'll be able to finally live more than a day. As a backup plan, I asked Jan to upload the full text without reading it or questioning it to the internet in the event I don't survive the night. Here's hoping this never sees the light of day. Signed, The Jumper. <laughs>